Hey everyone, welcome to From Pen and Paper to Prototype and Product by Manish Mali. So we are glad that you all can join us today. So just a reminder that on your right you'll see a discuss button. So you'll have to post your questions in the Q and A section over there. And without any further ado, over to you, Manish. Uh, cool. Thank you, Sejal. Hi everyone. Let me first uh, share my screen. Give me a second. I want to say it's great to see you all. Unfortunately, I cannot see you all. Uh, but 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 good to know that you know uh, so many people are here attending this conference and and this talk. So it's it's really my pleasure to to be with you today uh, from actually the COVID capital of India. So let me start with a bit of a quiz. How many of you know where I am right now? Uh, where is this COVID capital of India that I'm talking about? If you could put in your comments in the in the chat box, I'll be able to see it. Okay, I see a couple of responses there. Yes, it is. Uh, interestingly, I'm in Pune, not in Mumbai. Uh, uh, so yeah, Pune is currently the the COVID capital. Uh, so I really hope that you and your families are are keeping safe and healthy. And hello from an overcast, rainy, uh, COVID-struck Pune. Uh, although this virtual platform is is great and uh, uh, it's allowing us to be able to uh, you know to meet virtually, it's, this is going to be a short twenty minute talk, and I'll try my best to be able to uh, wrap it up soon so that I have time for one or two questions in the end. But if if not, there'll still be time in the VIP rooms, and we could connect there as well. I'm here to share my experience on how we can use some simple techniques to accelerate decision making and reduce the risk in building strategic products. So a bit about me, my name is Munish Malik. I'm a senior product manager with, with Equal Experts and previously I was working with Springer Nature. Now there are simple and powerful ways that can help us to reduce the risk of starting new initiatives and get real feedback quickly. Um, I will share one such case study where simple techniques of using a pen and paper to create paper prototypes help us answer complex business problems and, and validate business ideas. Since just about 18 minutes would be left, so I'm not going to be too prescriptive about these techniques. Rather, I want to encourage you to, to think simple, to, uh, you know, to validate business ideas, and I will let you experience it through a challenge that we were solving at Springer Nature. So with that, I'll get started. Uh, as product managers, product and UX designers and entrepreneurs, there are, there are you know, some key questions that we grapple with quite often, such as which is the right problem to solve or which idea or solution should we invest in. The idea validation can take months. You know, how can we really uh, make this feedback loop rapid, quick and, and, and iterative? Now, validating complex business ideas need not be complex. Uh, there are simple and powerful techniques that make the idea validation quick, fast, and also iterative. I will focus on one of them today. And as I said previously, I will explain that through a challenge that we were solving at Springer Nature for scientists and researchers uh, across life sciences. So to talk about the challenge, researchers trying to find the right protocol for their life sciences experiment is a very daunting task. A researcher may spend hours in their laboratories or, or outside, sometimes hundreds of hours in a year, only to find the right protocol that she would be able to make it work in her environment. Now, you may ask, what is a protocol? Like how we need a recipe to prepare a certain dish, let's say uh, a paneer tikka masala, now, a recipe usually looks like some instructions with some ingredients to use and how many steps it entails and what to do at each step for how long. In scientific research, such a recipe, that is a list of instructions, could be supplemented with some illustrations like pictures or video to conduct an experiment this is called a protocol. Now, protocols from various sources are available to the researcher. And as I said, that he or she may spend hours only to find the right protocol to make it work in her environment. As you can imagine, these protocols are very complex. Unlike the food recipes, for instance, the exact quantity, specification, time, availability of the chemicals to be used during an experiment are all a part of that protocol. Now, reviewing each reference 
of the protocol to understand its relevance can take a lot of time. So finding the right protocol is very, very important. That usually takes a, a, a large amount of time. Now, in today's COVID-19 world, it is a scenario that we all can relate to. Imagine a scientist researching for vaccines or drugs spends invaluable hours only to find the right protocol. And now multiply this time with so many researches going on across the world. So this is where the product that we were building called Springer Nature Experiments comes in. Springer Nature Experiments is a research solution allowing researchers to quickly find and evaluate the protocols and methods across life sciences. This, this platform combines portfolios across Springer Nature resources, which is the largest in life sciences to make searching for experiments easy and effective. So how did we go about it? It all begins with understanding the target audience to build a deeper empathy with their problems, to build user personas, understand their needs. And I think that is where the journey of a product should begin. So the UX team at Springer Nature conducted a lot of user research, met scientists across geographies and countries to build that empathy and understanding of the users, their needs, and came back with wealth of knowledge that was very useful in how we build the product. At the next stage, when we are conceptualizing a product, typically there are lots of ideas and, and starting points. Teams usually have a lot of debates and, and discussions, brainstorming through, through such inceptions and collaborative workshops. There are a lot of solutions or designs that get discussed. So it is important to find ways to be able to test those designs or concepts quickly with the target users to get validation, get the needed feedback, and move into product delivery with confidence. Now, what helps in the ideation sessions is getting you know, simple things such as a pen and paper out. Drawing and sketching ideas using pen and paper are super helpful. Now, sketching is an excellent way to quickly explore various concepts and ideas. The great thing about sketching is that it is not just limited to designers and you do not need to be a professional artist to produce a design or a sketch. Now, even though you may think you don't know how to draw or you don't know how to sketch, trust me, you do. You know, you just have to try that. Uh, so we collaborated on various designs and concepts of various screens that we wanted to test and lay them out in user flows of how the journey of the user could be once he or she uses the platform. I won't give a technical definition of design thinking, but we have interestingly already touched upon the first three aspects of it, where we started with understanding our users to build a deeper empathy with their problems and needs. We then spoke about the discovery and inception stage where we built a shared understanding about what are the right problems to solve. And then during the ideation workshops, we created some sketches of the ideas and the concepts that, that we wanted to test. I would now talk about the prototype and the test stages of design thinking. I would focus on one such technique for which all you need is a pen and paper and perhaps a pair of scissors. Uh, paper prototypes involves sketching designs on paper and seeing how a user would interact with it. Now the facilitator would ask the user to perform a use case using those prototypes. And as you can see in the image, based on where the user presses or, or selects on the prototype, the, the sketch can change and we can introduce a new screen which has been sketched or a new snippet of it. The shared understanding of our users, their needs and problems helped us to, to understand that, you know, what are the right uh, uh, concepts and, and ideas to be able to test. And this led us to build the paper prototypes that you wanted to test with the researchers to validate our direction, uh, our product concept, and the high level designs of the solution. Now through a short video, let me share some examples of the paper prototypes for the challenge that we were solving. And if I remind you of the challenge, which was to help the scientists find the most efficient and effective protocol to conduct a life sciences experiment. So I have a recorded video. Uh, I hope the experience is not that bad. So let me start with that. As you can see, I have a few sketches of the designs that I would like to test. Uh, and I have some extra papers, I have some sticky notes to be able to make changes to it or, or add new things, make notes or annotate it. Uh, and I have a pair of scissors as well in case I like to cut and create some new paper prototypes. 
with that, let's get started. So I'll put these two slightly on one side to focus on the current one. Say this is one of the designs of the homepage that we wanted to test amongst amongst uh, some other designs, of course. Uh, something like this is what we presented to the researchers involved in this early testing phase. This is the homepage of a new product that would help them find the most relevant and most important protocols and methods in, in life sciences experiments. As you can imagine, the user looked at it. There are several links through which he or she can enter the product. For every such prototype sketch, we have a conversation with the user. For instance, in this case, what do they think about this homepage and, and, and the various areas or the various links that are there on it and, and take their feedback. As I mentioned earlier, one of the things that are really very, very helpful and convenient are to be able to make changes to it on the fly, depending on how the conversation really goes, and add or remove things from it, depending upon what the user really sees. Say our user chooses chooses to select the, the search bar and decides to type DNA as she's interested to find protocols matching the technique of DNA extraction. So we try to simulate that behavior and we put this DNA. The moment user types DNA and auto suggest shows up with, with these options. Since the user uh, is interested to uh, find protocols matching the technique of DNA extraction, that is one of the values as well. So we have a bit of a conversation with the user about the search box, the search bar, and, and the, how the auto suggest shows up. and. That way we can you know, uh, use this design and use this behavior to have a conversation and get some feedback. So the user selects DNA extraction and we have a search results that, that, uh, that match that uh, interaction that the user just did. And the search results page shows up where the user can see the overall results count, various protocols, along with a snippet of that protocol, you know, how much time does that protocol take, how many downloads does that protocol have had, it has some pagination options, some filtering options on the left. So we discuss the design and discuss whether this is something that the user was, was expecting when she typed DNA extraction and we collect useful feedback. So the user is, uh, is interested to filter down the search results a bit more and wants to narrow it down further and selects a technique of cell and tissue culture. Again, we have prototypes to match various interactions that the user can do. So we have one to match this as well. The moment user selects a particular facet, the search results get narrowed down further and say they become slightly lesser. And uh, these new set of search results show up. The user wants to filter down the search results even more and then wants to maybe use the publication here slider as she saw and wants to use this to come somewhere out here to be able to see the protocols between the years 1984 to say 2002. As you would expect the search results get narrowed down further and this is the new set of search results that then show up. Again the results count has really come down and hopefully the user is trying to get to where she wants to be. And uh, then, then uses this sorting option, which currently has a default value of relevance. The user, the moment the user clicks on this, you know, something like this is what we had created for for sorting. And then let's say user is interested to find the protocols that are most cited. The moment the user clicks on most cited, we have this new set of search results the set that that then show up in the order of the ones that are more cited and let's say eventually the user gets to the one that she was really looking for. So the user clicks on it, the protocol that she's interested to, to view further and a new screen that talks more about that protocol shows up. Each of these sketches that I presented to you allows us to have a dialogue with the user, have a conversation with the user and take her feedback on what she thinks of it. As you saw how convenient it became to test the paper prototype without much investment, without a single line of code or software being written until now. Once there was a basic validation and feedback to the product concept and initial designs, we then moved to some low fidelity digital prototypes where we built uh, those in a couple of days and we could build an aggregated search ag uh, in accessing the various protocol resources and the websites uh, from Springer Nature that we had access to and put them all on a, on a search result screen that the user could actually then interact with and play it as well. So from paper prototype, we moved to a bit digital, but still kept things very plain and simple 
uh, but allowed the user to actually engage with it uh, and we could see how that experience was. I, I know it's a short talk, but you know, uh, I, I also want to show you how the product currently looks like as well. Uh, so the product is now live and it's called experiments.spinganatures.com. And as you can see, uh, the, the homepage is definitely much better in how those uh, initial designs looked, as you would expect. But uh, um, the search bar continues to be very prominent and some key feedback that we got from our testing as well. If I try to simulate the behavior of the DNA extraction search, then as you can see, there are, of course, search results that show up matching the technique of DNA extraction. There are more uh, such filtering options on the left-hand side than, we, than what we presented in those initial designs. And uh, the sorting options actually have become these tabs so that the user can quickly access it and see it as well right, right at front. Uh, the product continues to invite users to participate in, in more user research to allow the product to keep on getting better as, as the user feedback or the journey to collect user feedback should never really stop. Uh, I'll go further. Uh, now, there are several benefits of using such uh, paper prototyping techniques. As you saw, it is quick and, and through rapid iterations, you can try various concepts. Uh, this one's my favorite. It is high on honesty and, and low on loyalty. Uh, because it doesn't take too much effort to build them, the users are rather comfortable in critiquing a paper prototype without really worrying about what the facilitator will feel. And similarly, the, the creators are not attached to them and can junk them without losing heart as well. Such prototyping is usually collaborative involving the team, so it is a lot of fun to build them and promotes team bonding. And uh, even though you think you don't know how to sketch, as I said previously, you do. You have to try and just uh, go along with sketching it and see how, how it goes for you. And uh, as I mentioned earlier as well, it carries very little investment, so there's not much cost attached to it. I should add, like everything else in the world, this is not a silver bullet. And there are times when paper prototyping or other low fidelity prototyping techniques will not work. In, in, in those situations, there are high fidelity prototypes and usability testing techniques that we continue to use in spring and experiments as well. Uh, and of course, then there are design sprints, which addresses the prototype testing from a well-defined process. But since this, again, is a very short talk, I'm going to leave that for further conversations in our uh, Q&A session. As we come to the end, I want to leave you with a couple of concepts. The first one being the democratization of design. So activities like sketching or you know joint ideation workshops are great examples of how the design process has now been democratized and allows non-designers and businesses and technology to be a part of the design process. Uh, so I know there are both people on both sides, but you know of course this further leads us to democratizing the innovation process or, or uh, as well. So in which you know in the words of IDEO, if I try to describe it, I think. They say that design thinking brings, brings together what is desirable from a human point of view with you know, what is viable from an economical point of view and what is technologically feasible as well. Uh, so it allows people who aren't trained as designers to be a part of the design process much earlier and, in fact, bridges the gap between designers and brings other capabilities such as technology people, business, and, in fact, even users earlier in the designing stage. And hence, you know, we, we democratize the whole design and innovation process. Uh, so th first, thank you for attending the talk. We are coming close to the end of it. And special thanks to Springer Nature and, and the Springer Nature Experiments team. Uh, before the Q&A, in the end, I would like to leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Dieter Rams. And uh, I would also like to encourage you to use pen and paper more often. I think Linda Rising, in her keynote the other day at the Agile uh, light conferences spoke about how writing our thoughts and experiences using a pen and paper can actually help alleviate our stress during these difficult times of coronavirus. So anyways, I I'm running out of my time. So thank you so much for attending the talk. And I would be happy to take questions if we, if we have time. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, attending today's session. And uh, thank you so much, Manish, for sharing your experience with us today.